Já há integração entre esses sistemas e os sistemas de televisão? Ou simplesmente não existe? Ou eles vão tomar o mercado de telecomunicações? Vamos tentar responder. Alguém da mesa se candidata a responder essa pergunta? Depois os outros podem... Salomão, uma, uma pergunta acho que muito bem colocada e ao longo da minha da apresentação, quando a gente trata do segmento de home, do segmento residencial, é, eu rapidamente passei sobre a convergência dos devices. Né? É, é pena que não está alocado aqui, mas é, nós temos uma, uma visão de que há uma convergência desses devices centrados no uso do PC e centrados no uso da TV. Né? Certamente, se vai ganhar, se não vai ganhar, não sou profeta para estar tá colocando, mas que ah, haverá uma, uma briga muito acirrada e esses sete de concorrentes que você colocou são novos entrantes para disputar o posicionamento dessa cadeia ou você está absolutamente correto na sua colocação? Olha, o negócio é vocês falarem em mobilidade. O pessoal de televisão está falando em velocidade, recebendo um laptop com a velocidade de TV uma informação da, da internet. Já está em operação na Europa o, o Digital Home Platform e o Mobile Home Platform, que permite que você, até 250 km por hora, receba as informações e interaja através dos sistemas de celular, que é o que você vai falar, o MTS, o GSM, etc. I can hear you, yes, Mark. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, firstly, yeah, thank you. Um, I'd like to tell you that uh, a third generation will see also convergence between the mobile industry and the broadcasters industry. One of our very busy and active members is the Italian broadcaster Rai. They have recognized the possibilities of services which they, which they can offer via mobile um, applications and vice versa what mobile people can uh, do together with the uh, broadcasters. So we have a group which is working on this, especially this one, and uh, uh, if you have a look at the website, you'll find uh, some more details on this one, especially uh, one guy, he speaks Portuguese because he is Portuguese, um, Bosco Fernandes, he is the uh, chairman of uh, the ICT group. Secondly, I'd like to say uh, one thing, I have some uh, leaflets in the back of the room, especially one is related to the three new studies, and please make use of it and take it home. Thank you. Eu gostaria de colocar um pouco de gasolina nessa fogueira e perguntar então na sequência para o Sam Samuel, porque o que eu vi aqui da curva de, de, de progresso que você está prevendo para a velocidade de, do dos novos padrões, significa encurtar pela metade a curva de progresso do, da, do acesso à internet por fio que ocorreu na década de 90. Ou seja, nós entramos na década de 90 com 9,6 e saímos com 128, aí falando do usuário comum, o que ele pode ter acesso. E agora você está prometendo ir rapidamente a 4 megas em, uh, até 2005. Então, nesse ambiente, você não acha que o wireless teria toda a competência para para competir também? Sam, você pode ir. Salomão, vamos deixar as outras pessoas, eles não estarão aqui amanhã. Ai. I didn't fully understand the question, but I will attempt it. Uh, if in, in, in most of the mobile environment, I think people are talking about multimedia services rather than a streaming video. Uh, there are some work going on in, in terms of uh, streaming videos similar to streaming voice, but from what I understand, a lot of that is for video conferencing kind of application, but not real live broadcasts. 
Dr. Byrne and Dr. Sam, and it's regarding the uh, future infrastructure requirements that the third generation systems will need. And specifically, my question is, in the recent experience of the uh, licenses, 3G licenses that are being put uh, worldwide, how much of a new infrastructure, uh, meaning radio base stations, towers, shelters, etc., uh, are the new oper operators need to need to put, or how much of the old existing infrastructure can be used? Uh, we're sp uh, specifically uh, interested in this question as we supply infrastructure type uh, equipment. Uh, just to remember that here in Brazil we have uh, TDMA and CDMA as the, the two uh, protocols that we use to, to standards that we use today. Yes. Uh, I I would uh, maybe start with the with the CDMA. I, I think the question, and if, if I do misinterpret it, please ask me again. Uh, is you know, moving towards a third generation system, one is the infrastructure structure cost itself, and the other one is the spectrum cost for a, for a third generation. Uh, if if you if you remember my my slide, I showed in, in terms of evolution. Uh, if if you're deploying again, I, I associate very strongly 3G as services. I don't relate that. This is my personal opinion to any frequency bands. If you, if you can't provide that service in a general comment from, uh, from Dr. Bernd on the prices paid on the UMTS licenses in Europe, uh, what's the general opinion of the telecom community in Europe on that prices? That's a good question. As uh, the uh, prices or what the operators paid for the, for the licenses uh, has being completely different. There are two countries where operators have paid a significant amount of money. That was the UK and Germany. Uh, but you have to realize the different situations where these countries are. Let's take uh, uh, Germany, for example. If you are familiar with the situation in, uh, um, in Europe, you see that Germany is just in the center, in the middle of Europe. All operators who want to build a pan-European network have to go through Germany. And therefore, it was very, very important for them to get a license in Germany. And that increased the price. My members, especially those who are operators and bought these licenses in Germany and in the UK, they all said, yes, we paid a lot of money, but we didn't pay too much. It is value of money what we bought, because they have a very specific view on services and applications and the opportunities for third generation.